I am here with my good friend Danny Lowe oh, and of I'm Renegade here. Game Studios. Welcome back. <laughs> and we're here to talk about yet another amazing Renegade title, Rayholt. Yes. So this is a new Uwe Rosenberg game, which is super exciting to me. Uh, Cavern is in my top three games, so I'm super excited to awesome. try this one. It's actually an intro to Uwe game, as I found out when I played it. Um, it takes aspects of several of, several of his other games and makes it into a very friendly, streamlined experience. So Interesting. A three-player game took about 40 minutes to play. And yeah. what other games do you feel like it draws on? So there's aspects of Agricola, not just because it has adorable veggie meeples, um, but it's worker placement. There's a, a track along the outside where you pay resources. Uh -huh. That's been compared to Gates of Lying. So when you are playing this game, what's kind of the theme? So we are farmers in Iceland. It, we're famous for our greenhouses that produce vegetables using the geothermal um, heating system found in Iceland. So the theme of the game is that tourists have come to admire our greenhouses and our vegetables. Uh, they sit at the tables and we need to feed them. So the winner of the game is whoever has fed the most tourists. Oh, um, okay. There's no points. It's just whoever who whoever's made it the furthest. So your score at the end might be five tomatoes, which we struggled to put into BGG. <laughs> How do we know when someone has won? <laughs> uh, the game lasts a very specific amount of rounds, depending oh, on player count, and each round has four phases. There's worker, harvest, tourism, and then homecoming. So Got it. it's fairly self-explanatory with the first two. Worker, you place your workers out on the board. Mm -hmm. Unlike other Uwe games, you don't obtain more workers you start with three you end with three and each action is very valuable there's no blocking other players really you may inadvertently do something that they also wanted to do yeah but because actions are so precious it's never out of spite each column has a different theme for the actions so this one on the left is all about greenhouses you get additional um, greenhouse cards so you can plant more mm -hmm. the second column is planting how convenient the third is harvesting or just getting uh, straight meeples from the source. And the last column has some really crazy combos, conversions, um, magic. Now, these are really cool meeples. They, you should definitely have a look at mm -hmm. them. Um, you guys want to see inside the lid of the box, and so we're showing you. After you place your workers and do yeah. whatever your actions are, you harvest, which is pretty familiar with other farm type Uwe games, you just take a meeple off of your field, right. put it into your stock, and then the interesting, unique part of the game comes in okay. with the track. So you want to advance as far as you're able to. Uh -huh. To advance, you have to pay whatever the tourists want to eat. So with what I have here as an example, mm -hmm. I'll pay a tomato and move my marker one. Then I'll pay a, a cabbage, move again. Uh -huh. I don't have a mushroom, however. There's a rule that you must follow. If you don't want to or you're unable to pay, you still advance, and then you gain that meeple okay. into your stock. So it's a good thing, and you have to do it once per uh, tourism phase. So then I still have a cauliflower, which I can pay, and I'll move forward, and a carrot, and I can move forward. Uh -huh. I don't have two tomatoes. They're still in my field, so I stop for now. You are trying to min-max your failures as a farmer and plan for the next uh, the next round, the next season. So it's an Uwe game, which if you've played an Uwe game before, you know that he loves cards. The game actually comes with a decent-sized deck, 30, 40 cards. Um, however, they're pretty unique. And each game you play, you only see a few, five in a three-player game. So it's not overwhelming to new players. There's not too many choices, right. too many things to read. So these are face-up in front of everyone they can mm -hmm. see. You can take an action to take a card. However, you might notice that the text is a little bit funny. There's text on the top and bottom. Okay. And that is because, as an action, you can share a card. Oh. If, if you have this card in, and yeah. I'm like, hmm, that would be super useful. I can take it too. We rotate it, so it's in between us. Now mm -hmm. you can read this text, and I can read this text. And we both gain an advantage. Yep, same Very effect. Cool. Um, very friendly. Another aspect of the friendliness of this game is um, these highlighted spaces on the board. I don't know if you can see them on camera, but the first and fourth column has highlighted spaces with flags. 
each player can only take one flag action in each column per uh -huh. round. And that is to make sure that each player has the chance to gain that effect. They're all fairly similar. These green ones all grant you a greenhouse. So if someone, if each player wants a greenhouse, they're able to get it. Okay. Um, and Uwe was very specific about designing it that way, especially with the layout of the board. Mm -hmm. This is set up for a four-player game. Three players, the top row would be covered up, and two players actually the opposite side of the board. And it's a, a board about yay big. Okay. So keeps things tight and still provides you with enough options to make it interesting. Another new thing for Uwe Games is this separate deck. So there is a story mode in this game now. It's not campaign or legacy, yeah. but it introduces a story. So a tourism manager comes to you and she's like, here's the itinerary for today. You need to do X, Y, and uh -huh. Z. So it gives you goals and ways to orient your strategy. So once you're familiar with the base game, you can try new things. Um, so that's really cool because it really does keep it fresh. Not only do you have different cards that could come up from the ones you showed before, but you have story cards that are going to come out and mm -hmm. start making things different. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, so it, it deepens this intro to Uwe game. And we actually have his other game, Spring Meadow, covered from Gen Con. So make sure you check the information below the video. We will link that there so you can get a sense of another game from this designer, which is awesome. But you really should check in with Renegade on all of their different channels to see more announcements about exactly when this is going to be there uh, and any other developments that you guys might have because I know you guys are constantly releasing new games. We so. have quite a few developments. So <laughs> where um, where can they follow you guys? So our Facebook is facebook.com slash play RGS. Mm -hmm. We have a Twitter, uh, at Play Renegade, and we also have an Instagram, Renegade underscore game underscore studios. That's International it. sign of underscore yeah, is I this. I think so. <laughs> we have done a lot of great videos with Danny and with Renegade. We did two videos at Gen Con for Gun Kimono and Spell Smashers. Mm -hmm. We met up again because you just can't. We're can't like get magnets. Enough. You yep. can't keep us apart. You just can't do it. Uh, we met up at New York Comic Con this year and talked about the Ghostbusters card game. Because who are you going to call Danny Lowe? Oh, when me. It's, yeah, it's oh. you. But also Ghostbusters. Also. Um, and uh, that will be out on the channel. You will also see our Overlight series, which will cover three different aspects of their RPG. So Super cool. three different videos on just that one game. And we just talked about their other game, Architects of the West Kingdom, which has been demoing like crazy here yeah, at Essen. we sold out. So, awesome. Um, you will definitely want to tell us what your favorite Renegade game is down in the comments so that Danny can be like, they love Aww. me. They really love me. You can hit us up on Twitter to start looking underneath the lids of these boxes and checking out the components. We want to give you a closer look at all of this. You can find us on Instagram at, at Active Player Network, and you can find us on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any of this content. We have content from trade shows. We have content from our studio. It's bonkers. We never stop, and we always want to show you what's coming up next. So subscribe at youtube.com slash Active Player Network, and chat with us on Twitter. Just, just a little chat at Active Player Net. Thanks for watching, guys. We hope if you're here at Essen that you have had a fantastic show, and hopefully we'll see you next at PAX Unplugged. Are you going to be there? I will be there. All right. Well, come <laughs> find Danny at Renegade, and come find me at our Active Player Network booth. Yeah.